Can you name any famous graphic designers? For some, it may be a difficult question, but if you're a fan of films, you'll surely name Saul Bass. He is widely considered one of the most influential graphic designers of all time. His logos for companies such as AT&T, Quaker Oats, and the United Airlines are some of the longest lasting logos of all time. But besides big companies, Bass also created works for some of the most influential directors of the 20th century, including Stanley Kubrick, Otto Preminger, and Alfred Hitchcock. Born May 8, 1920, in the Bronx, Bass attended the James Moore High School and upon graduation attended a fellowship to the Art and Students League in Manhattan. There he studied under the famous Hungarian-born designer, Gregor Kepps. After completing his studies, Saul Bass began his career as a freelancer for several advertising companies and agencies, including the illustrious Warner Brothers. In 1954, Saul was given his big break when he was hired by a filmmaker, Otto Preminger, to design a poster for the film Carmen Jones. Intrigued by Bass's work, Preminger gave him the opportunity to create the film's title sequence as well, which Bass saw as a chance to use visuals to set the mood and the theme of the movie. We will hear from him now. Mr. Bass, how did you get started in film titles? Well, I began as a graphic designer. As part of my work, I created many film symbols for ad campaigns. During that period, I happened to be working on the symbols for Carmen Jones and Man with the Golden Arm for Otto Preminger. And at one point in our work, Otto and I just looked at each other and said, why not make it move? And it was really as simple as that. Now, additionally, I had felt for some time that the audience involvement with a film should really begin with the very first frame. You have to remember that until then, titles had tended to be lists of dull credits, uh, mostly ignored or used for popcorn time. So there seemed to be a real opportunity to use titles in a new way, uh, to actually create a climate for the story that was about to unfold. You mentioned the symbol for the man with the golden arm. When the film opened in New York in 1952, only the symbol was used in the marquee, a testimony to the effectiveness of that medium. How did the symbol function when you translated it into film? Well, you'll remember that the film was about drug addiction. And the symbol, that is the arm, in its jagged form, expressed the jarring, disjointed existence of the drug addict. Now, to the extent that it was an accurate and telling synthesis of the film and the ad campaign, these same qualities came with it into the theater. And of course, with the addition of motion and sound, really came alive and set up the mood and the texture of the film. Additionally, Bass was brought on board by esteemed director Alfred Hitchcock to create the title sequences for some of his most iconic films, including Vertigo in 1958, North by Northwest in 1959, and Psycho in 1960. He introduced kinetic topography, a technique previously unseen in Hollywood films, to these title sequences, pioneering an innovative and influential style. He believed that the title should create an emotional bond with the audience, immersing them in the world of the film. His goal was to use ordinary objects in a surprising way, transforming them into something extraordinary. Saul Bass was also an iconic filmmaker, immortalized in film history for his role as film consultant on Alfred Hitchcock's legendary shower scene in Psycho, which was constructed from over 70 shots. This scene is one of the most iconic and talked about sequences in film history, managing to capture all the nudity and violence without ever showing either. Even all these years later, it still has the capacity to shock and awe viewers. While there has been some debate and controversy over the scene, it is clear that there was an intense collaboration between Hitchcock and Bass that resulted in its timeless masterpiece. The 
it was an extraordinary notion killing the star of the film in the first reel. You know, it was 10 minutes into the film and Janet Lee was gone. I mean, that was about as shocking as the sequence itself. Bass's approach to visual storytelling was revolutionary and pushed the boundaries of the medium. His works remain timeless classics and inspiration for filmmakers and graphic designers around the world. So what better way to end this than with some advice from the man himself? Mr. Bass, what advice would you give to young designers? Learn to draw. If you don't, you're going to live your life getting around that and trying to compensate for that. It's like now, so when the problem is there, instead of doing a drawing when you have to do it, you know, to, to, to deal with the communication issue, you find another lesser way to do it. It's like you have to do this. Instead of forthrightly dealing with it, you have to sort of turn your arm and twist your shoulder and, and do a solution that comes out as a square or a triangle or a, or a, or a, or a circle. You know, and that's ridiculous. You can't get away with that. It's a crippling absence that, and the unfortunate thing is, you can get by with it without it, and you can even get a job and you can move to a certain point, but then when you realize, that's when you realize that you really wish you knew how to draw, and it's too late, because you'll never go back to school. You'll never have the discipline to take a night class, because, and you can't afford the drop in salary anymore. You've geared your life to that money, and you're finished. You're never going to learn how to draw, and isn't that awful?